This evening we are celebrating the Vigil of Pentecost. Opening hymn is number 298 in the Missalette, Come Holy Christ. church when the spirit came down and gave the early disciples the courage to go out and proclaim the good news to gather more people into the fold of Jesus Christ and tonight we also come before the Lord and ask him for the special gifts that he has in store for us the gift of the spirit to be poured into our hearts once again anew afresh we also ask him especially for the gift of his mercy I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God 
Grant we pray, Almighty God, that the splendor of your glory may shine forth upon us, and that by the bright rays of the Holy Spirit, the light of your light may confirm the hearts of those born again by your grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The whole world spoke the same language, using the same words. While the people were migrating in the east, they came upon a valley in the land of Shinar and settled there. They said to one another, Come, let us mold bricks and harden them with fire. They used bricks for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the sky, and so make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we shall be scattered all over the earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the people had built. Then the Lord said, If now, while they are one people, all speaking the same language, they have started to do this, Nothing will later stop them from doing whatever they presume to do. Let us then go down there and confuse their language so that one will not understand what another says. Thus the Lord scattered them from there all over the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the speech of all the world. It was from that place that he scattered them, all over the earth, the word of the Lord. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen, chosen to be his own. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen, chosen to be his own. The Lord brings to naught the plans of nations. He foils the designs of people. But the plan of the Lord stands forever, the design of his heart through all generations. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen, chosen to be his own. Bless the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen for his own inheritance. From heaven the Lord looks down, he sees all mankind. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen, chosen to be his own. From his fixed throne he beholds all who dwell on the earth. He has fashioned the heart of each, he who knows all their works. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen, chosen to be his own. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses went up the mountain to God. Then the Lord called to him and said, Thus shall you say to the house of Jacob, Tell the Israelites, you have seen for yourselves how I treated the Egyptians and how I bore you up on eagles' wings and brought you here to myself. Therefore, if you hearken to my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my special possession, dearer to me than all other people, though all the earth is mine. You shall be to me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation, that is what you must tell the Israelites. So Moses went and summoned the elders of the people when he set before them all that the Lord had ordered, them, ordered him to tell them. 
the people all answered together, everything the Lord has said we will do. On the morning of the third day, there were peals of thunder and lightning and a heavy cloud over the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast so that all the people in the camp trembled. But Moses led the people out of the camp to meet God and they stationed themselves at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was all wrapped in smoke, for the Lord had come down upon it in fire. The smoke rose from it as though from a furnace, and the whole mountain trembled violently. The trumpet blast grew louder and louder while Moses was speaking, and God answering him with thunder. When the Lord came down to the top of Mount Sinai, he summoned Moses to the top of the mountain. The word of the Lord. Exalted above all forever, and blessed is your holy and glorious name. Praiseworthy and exalted above all for all ages. Glory. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and glorious above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Blessed are you who look into your, the depths from your throne upon the cherubim, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven, praiseworthy and glorious forever. Glory and praise forever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he led me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me in the center of the plain, which was now filled with bones. He made me walk among the bones in every direction so that I saw how many they were on the surface of the plain, how dry they were. He asked me, Son of man, can those bones come to life? I answered, Lord God, you alone know that. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, See, I will bring spirit into you, that you may come to life. I will put sinews upon you and make flesh grow over you, cover you with skin and put spirit in you, so that you may come to life and know that I am the Lord. I, Ezekiel, prophesied as I had been told, and even as I was prophesying, I heard a noise. It was... It was a rattling as the bones came together, bone joining bone. I saw the sinews and the flesh come upon them and the skin cover them, but there was no spirit in them. Then the Lord said to me, prophesy to the spirit, prophesy son of man and say to the spirit, thus says the Lord God, 
from the four winds come, O Spirit, and breathe into these slain that they may come to life. I prophesied as he told me, and the Spirit came into them. They came alive and stood upright, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They have been saying, Our bones are dried up, our hope is lost, and we are cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, O oh, my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O oh, my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live. I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are true, all of them just. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold. Sweeter also than syrup, or honey from the cold. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Thus says the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions even upon the servants and the handmaids in those days i will pour out my spirit and i will work wonders in the heavens and on the earth blood fire and columns of smoke the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood at the coming of the day of the lord the great and terrible day then everyone shall be rescued who calls on the name of the Lord. For on Mount Zion there shall be a remnant, as the Lord has said, and in Jerusalem survivors whom the Lord shall call. The word of the Lord. to the
has redeemed from the hand of the foe and gathered from the lands, from the east and the west, from the north and the south. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. They went astray in the desert wilderness, the way to an inhabited city they did not find. Hungry and thirsty, their life was wasting away within them. Give thanks to the Lord, His love is everlasting. They cry to the Lord in their distress, from their straits He rescued them. And he led them by a direct way to reach an inhabited city. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and his wondrous deeds to the children of men. Because he satisfied the longing soul and filled the hungry soul with good things. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved, now, hope that sees is not hope, for who hopes for what one sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait with endurance. In the same way, the Spirit, too, comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the Holy Ones according to God's will. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood up and exclaimed, 
Let anyone who thirsts come to me and drink. As scripture says, rivers of living water will flow from within him who believes in me. He said this in reference to the spirit that those who came to believe in him were to receive. There was, of course, no spirit yet because Jesus had not yet been glorified. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As we come to the end of at least the first part of our quarantine and the, resum the resuming of um, masses, it was a good time, it's a good time for us to reflect on kind of the experiences of the Easter season for us and the time before. We've been now uh, in isolation or quarantine uh, for over 70 days. It's hard to believe. Uh, as I was looking um, on the internet and reading some articles off of a Catholic news site, I came across one where the author was going through the stages or different emotional responses, different feelings that we can have to being separated from our gathering, our worshiping together. And I'd like to share at least the introduction to the article because I think he's got a very good list of where our souls could be uh, at after this long time of quarantine. He, he gives 10 possible answers uh, to the question, what discernible impact is the absence of public masses having on me? Here are 10 possible answers. One, I have a vague feeling that I'm missing something. Two, I find it harder to control unruly impulses. Three, I am experiencing more spiritual dryness. Four, I feel a deep yearning for mass and communion. Five, I experience increased feelings of fatigue. Six, I have a felt need to increase other forms of prayer. Seven, I am suffering a sense of isolation from the church. Eight, I have lost my normal feelings of spiritual consolation. Nine, I have only an intellectual awareness of the loss. And 10, I do not perceive any loss at all. The 10 possible answers that he gives are a good kind of assessment, I think, for the general number, uh, general feelings that people could have. I'm sure there are more uh, in there. And I was reflecting on what his words, what he was saying in his article and what uh, these, this list, and I was comparing uh, those seasons of the soul uh, with seasons in my own life when I was either close or far away from the sacraments. And I think he's got a very good point. When we're separated from worship, communal worship as a church, we can lose a focus. We can lose kind of the interior dispositions of our spirit towards God. We can lose out on the peace that he gives. I remember when I was very young, I was in grade school and I had the opportunity to go to daily mass. And I was reflecting on those years that I was going to daily mass. And those were some of the most peaceful years of my elementary education, those years when I was going to daily Mass and coming together with the church body to worship the Lord, some of the most peaceful years looking back. Then came a period of darkness in my life when I was a professed atheist and going to Mass when my, uh, my mom made me go or going to church when my, my parents made me go was, was very grinding on me. I didn't want to be there. There was a painfulness in that period of uh, worship when I was forced to go. And it was also one of the darkest times in my life. Uh, that was the time when I was getting into fights and causing all sorts of issues, you know, um, God bless my mom, uh, during those times. That was a very dark time. And then came my reversion back to the faith. And then I started experiencing the gifts of the Spirit in new and profound ways. I was on this... Um, Retreat, this kind of uh, this conference, this convention, and I'd experienced for the first time somebody praying over me and asking for the Holy Spirit to come into my heart, and I was overwhelmed with this just sense of peace. 
It brought my own soul to this height of peace and calm that I'd never experienced, joy, fulfillment. It was like I was really drinking from the well of the Spirit, and my soul was content. How wonderful it was then to be in the presence of the Spirit outside, um, you know, with the people of God assembled. Even though we were outside of liturgy, per se, we were outside of uh, the, the, the church body, the, the, the building, the, the mass. We were outside of that, but we were still experiencing drinking from the Spirit as we worshipped together. And then as I uh, kind of went deeper into my faith and developed that habitual routine of prayer, of going to Mass, of the discipline of entering into communion with the Lord, I just noticed in my life a general sense of calm, even in the midst of trials. It was the Lord and worship as a body that brought me a deeper faith as I was in college. Those days when I wouldn't go to Mass, even daily Mass, were the days that I struggled the most to find peace, to find purpose, to find uh, the, just the joy of being uh, a son of God. And then, you know, as I experienced more and more the gifts of uh, the church, especially as a priest, I realized how important it is to gather as a community. Uh, so many ways in which the Spirit guides us and leads us uh, to uh, together as a community. Um, I've noticed uh, today that on the vigil of Pentecost, Penta, it means five. You know, we celebrate 50 days from Easter, uh, and so we, we, we mark this day as the day when the church came. It's Pentecost because it was 50 days after Easter. The five is important. There are five readings, and each of them uh, leading up to the gospel gives one little insight into what it is to be part of uh, this body that's receiving the gift of the Spirit. The first reading talks about Babel and this experience where people went out and tried to build themselves up. They tried to build a tower that was to glorify themselves. They took it upon themselves to really go out and do this great work. And God's like, you missed me. And he scattered their languages. And so we know that that's not what God envisions when we try and build something. You know, it's not without him. It's always under his inspiration. I was reflecting on this first reading and thinking about what it means to be church, to gather as a community, to come together. And I was looking in the Greek, uh, and in the Greek, church, the word ecclesia, it means an assembly, a public gathering of the faithful. To be church then, to be a church, is to be a gathered community united in worship of God. Uh, it's what the Israelites understood. It's what the Greeks understood. Ecclesia, church, means a gathered body for a purpose. It comes uh, from another Greek word, which means to call. And so Jesus calls a body together to worship and to pray. And that is the building that he intends uh, to do within us, this gathering of the community in prayer. And we see that evident in the second reading for this evening, when the children of Israel are gathered around Mount Sinai. They're gathered together and they receive the gift of this, um, that Moses, uh, you know, of gathering together with God and, and Moses in that particular, um, that, that um, uh, by the mountain there. Uh, they receive uh, the gift of being church by being gathered together in prayer. Uh, during this time of isolation, the third reading comes into play, and especially some of the things that Dr. Miris had said in this article, uh, where Ezekiel is prophesying to dry bones, bones that have been perhaps removed from the consolations that they normally experience, bones that had uh, lost the gift of the life-giving um, spirit of God. We, uh, in this time of quarantine, talking to people, we've noticed that there is a dryness, not only in our, our church body, which is not a body, a church body, because it's, it's divided up, uh, but we've noticed there's a dryness in our society, kind of a agitation, uh, because uh, we're just longing for something. We're longing for a deeper peace. We're longing for a sense of fulfillment as a society. And Ezekiel, in his 
in the reading we have from Ezekiel where he's prophesying over the dry bones, speaking the words of God to them, uh, that we start to see that dry bones come to life when the word of God is spoken to them, when they receive that spirit of life uh, coming into them that comes, that spirit uh, that comes from God alone. And then, of course, we have the prophet Joel, who's saying that all those motivated by the Spirit are going to start having heavenly visions. They're going to have this, um, they're going to be able to look and see heaven. They're going to be able to prophesy and bring the gifts of heaven to earth. Uh, and those ultimately are the gifts of peace. They're the gifts uh, that bring us purpose in our life. The gifts that come from heaven are the gifts that bring us fulfillment. It's said that we have a God-sized hole in our own hearts, and it can only be filled uh, by God himself. And so we see that in Joel, when the Spirit is coming and living among us, that we have this fulfillment. And finally, in our last reading we, uh, before the Gospel, we hear that our hope is truly in Jesus Christ. He's the one that can bring us the hope that we so desperately desire. We see it, that desire in our community. And Jesus is the one who can build, bring us hope and bring us peace. I'm reminded of a time when John Paul II, when John Paul II went to Denver, Colorado, and a bunch of youth gathered for one of the World Youth Days in the United States, and as these youth were going through the streets of Denver, praying for the people, praying, you know, f um, um, praying for themselves, and then also singing hymns to God, you know, praying the, the rosary, uh, and the, the peace of Christ came to that city. It's, it's noted, it's provable that there was a marked drop in crime during that time. They'd been experiencing a rash of murders leading up to that point. And when all those pilgrims were going through the streets of Denver, praying together as a church, they were praying together and worshiping, calling down the Holy Spirit and asking for the Spirit uh, to be with that city, the crime rates went away. Murders plummeted, and there was a peace on Denver. The same peace comes to the hearts of those who gather in prayer and in worship, those who come before the Lord in the community and ask for his special blessings. As I was reflecting back on this, I could sum up all of my experiences uh, with the Holy Spirit, all of my experiences uh, with the peace of Christ by saying that the most intense times of consolation in my life, the most intense times of intense times of peace in my own life have happened before the altar when the community is gathered in prayer and worship. That peace not only transforms our own hearts, that peace that comes from worshiping God transforms our society. And indeed, that peace is a church gathered together uh, is the only peace that can truly change our world. We have a temptation, and I'll close with this, we have a temptation in our world to say that we need to step forward and do something, X, Y, and Z. Uh, we need to go out and we need to change the world for the better by doing X, Y, and Z. My proposal this evening is that we change the world by submitting ourselves to worship. We change the world by submitting ourselves to the Holy Spirit working in our life, to submitting ourselves to that peace. To be church in our society is to gather as an assembly and to worship our God. By doing that, everything changes. It becomes more peaceful, more joyful, and we drink from that well that is Jesus Christ uh, that he promises in our gospel today. Rivers of living water will flow from within him who believes in me. We have the opportunity to give the world the living water. We have the opportunity to receive Jesus into our own hearts. We have the opportunity to live in the Spirit if we open our hearts to him and allow him to lead us as a community gathered in worship. Let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only begotten Son of God, Lord and Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became a man. For our sake he was crucified under the conscious fire. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at our right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the cross. I believe in one holy Catholic and the solid church. I confess one baptism through the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the perfection of the and a life of the world is Amen. Let us trust lovingly in our God and bring to Him our prayers and petitions. That the Holy Spirit, who makes present the mystery of Christ, will reconcile all people and bring them into communion with the Church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, will show his richness to all those in need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have grown lukewarm in their faith, that the Holy Spirit will drive out the torpor of coldness and rekindle the desire for heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all the relationships in our own lives be made holy through the gift of the Holy Spirit, the bond of love in the Blessed Trinity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the marginalized, the doubt-ridden, and those on the verge of despair, that the peace of the Spirit will bring them to new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the grace this week to be free of fear and to live with the strength bestowed on us by the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Good and gracious Father, hear all of these prayers that we bring before you and the prayers we offer you in our hearts. Grant them all, for we make them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Bless be God for it. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for it. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of yours and the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Pour out upon these gifts the blessing of your spirit, we pray, O Lord, so that through them your church may be imbued with such love, that the truth of your saving mystery may shine forth for the whole world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion. You bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God, and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, and I pray for it. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter in my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those remotely listening or watching this broadcast, unable to be here to receive the most precious body of Christ, we invite you to participate in a spiritual communion with us. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, at least come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May these gifts we have consumed benefit, benefit us, O Lord, that we may always be aflame with the same Spirit whom you wondrously pour out on your apostles, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the Father of light, who was pleased to enlighten the disciples' minds by the outpouring of the Spirit, the paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing, and make you always abound with the gifts of the same Spirit. Amen. May the wondrous flame that appeared above the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from every evil and pervade them with its purifying light. Amen. And may God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in that same faith, and by believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is number 397 in the Missalette, Spirit and Grace. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.